Time now to check out Honda's all-new open-class naked bike, the CB900F Hornet, also known here in Canada as the 919. The Hornet name comes from the bike's two baby bros. Europe has had a 600 Hornet since 1998, while Japan got a 250 version before that. Luckily for us, Canada gets the 900 version, and that's where the 919 comes in, because this puppy is powered by the 1997 CBR 900 RR Fireblade engine, a powerful motor that displaces 919 cc's. And this blade's engine has been modernized, now equipped with fuel injection and electronic management system with 3D mapping. That power plant is then mated as a stressed member to a steel backbone frame, sporting a 43mm cartridge fork and a single rear shock bolted directly to an aluminum swing arm. So how does it all work? Well, let's hear what Steve Bradford had to say after a day with this stinger. So Steve, I know you're a big fan of the naked uh, super bike category, if you will, and I don't think they get any more naked than this, but what, what's your first impression? My first impression was it's small. It feels tiny when you're on board. The seat height is, I think, fairly standard. I'm not sure how high exactly, probably 31 inch range or something like that. Mm -hmm. Feet firmly go on the, on the ground, but when you're sitting on it, you feel very compressed. Those handlebars are close to the body, the foot pegs are relatively close to the seat, and you feel like you're sitting right there. Right. Tiny bike, just disappears beneath you. We know this, this motor is tried and true. It's from a previous generation, CBR 900. Now it's fuel injected. What were your first impressions of that motor? Lots of power, uh, no problem with that. Torquey right off the bottom, up through the mid-range and right out through the red line. Nice power build, no real peaks and valleys in it, nice and smooth, uh, and sounds wonderful too. It is a very silky smooth power plant. Did you have any, uh, any glitches or hiccups with the fuel injection? Didn't find any, uh, any problems with the way the power built, uh, right from idle on up through red line. Just noticed how instantaneous it would pick up the power when you hit the throttle. What about the clutch, the transmission? Everything light, smooth and buttery. I mean, you can't complain about that, uh, that drivetrain. It's, it's pretty slick. How did you find the handling? Extremely nimble. It, the way it dove into corners surprised me the first couple of turns that I took. Uh, I actually sort of overturned the bike and it headed for the apex of the corner. Just it responded so wonderfully to my inputs. I just had to sit back a little bit and let the bike do more of the work. I didn't need to be so putting so much force into the, uh, into the turns. How about the binders? Very strong, uh, maybe not a much, as much initial bite as a front rank sport bike, but uh, probably nine tenths mm -hmm. uh, power and feel. Uh, you know, the motor, nine tenths, I, and we'd say probably the thing is nine tenths the weight of some of its competition. So uh, in terms of uh, the overall fit, finish, the layout of the cockpit, the, just the actual approach to the styling, what, what did you think? I mean, did you like these old retro gauges? I'm thinking CB750 uh, Nighthawk when I see the front end of the bike. The back end's a, a real stark contrast to that with its modern looking upswept exhaust under the tail section. And, and who can argue with the CBR900 motor from the 1990s? A real centerpiece of the bike. I think it's a nice package. It's a package you can do a lot of different things on. You can go around town, go to the store, be seen on it. Uh, you can do a little touring on it possibly and there's nothing wrong with taking this type of bike to a track day. It's a, it's a general purpose bike. Well I'll add to that. I think with a nice wide rear pillion like this you could probably get a knapsack on the back there, maybe a tank bag. You could even do a little bit of sport touring. It, it is very comfortable and very smooth so it's not like you're gonna get vibrated to death. No, I don't think the bike would tire you out and you don't have to work real hard with that motor. It's got all the torque you need pretty much everywhere, so you're not throwing the gearbox to make progress. The only thing you might do is just add a little bit of wind protection on the front end of it. Right, if you were gonna do a lot of highway riding. Right. A anything else you think the bike needs? I prefer to see with a center stand. Right. Uh, Chain-driven bikes of this area, most of them I think had center stands, and I'd, I'd like to see one on this one as well. Well, there's a certain cult factor that's involved in terms of the, the naked bikes. We know that there's a lot of guys that go out and um, you know, enjoy a little bit of hooliganism. And I noticed a few times in the rear view mirror, you were popping the occasional wheelie. A lot of fun factor? A lot of fun factor. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that either. That was just the beautiful power <laughs> delivery just, of this bike in a yeah. short wheelbase. Yes, but uh, good, good for a blast? Good for a blast, a lot of fun, and, and it makes you a better rider. It's just so easy to ride. And it's, uh, it's a modern take on a 70s or 80s era general purpose bike. And it does it very, very well. Puts a smile on your face. Sure does. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Dave.